What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. The Matrix is a computer simulation of reality in a post-apocalyptic world ruled by artificially intelligent machines. The human resistance rescues enslaved human beings from this simulation. Morpheus, a major figure in the resistance, rescues Neo and explains that a prophecy foretells a being called the One. This individual will act as their savior. Neo is obviously a messianic figure, but in spite of a character calling him my own personal Jesus Christ, Neo more closely resembles a more Gnostic messiah. In mainstream Christianity, Jesus Christ saved humanity from its sins. Gnosticism is more concerned with ignorance as humanity's largest problem. Ignorance of the true, less benevolent nature of our creator. Though the religious and philosophical references are pervasive and frequent, none build into a cohesive allegory, and many of them appear and disappear without much to say. This seems to be intentional, as the Matrix is more concerned with questioning rather than answering. This is not a failing, though. Philosophy more often trades in proposals and hypotheses than exact resolutions and conclusions. In this scene, Neo opens a copy of Simulacra and Simulation by modern philosopher Jean Baudrillard. Simulacra and Simulation discusses images and signs and how they relate to our contemporary society. The book argues that late 20th century consumer culture and pop culture is a world in which simulations of reality have become more real than reality itself, a condition he describes as the hyper-real. He believes we have replaced reality and meaning with symbols and signs, and in an abstract sense, what we know as reality actually is a simulation of reality. A video game is a simulacra of the experience that it replicates, for example. He called the loss of genuine connection the Desert of the Real, referenced in this scene by Morpheus. Baudrillard considered this artificiality, this unrealness, a system of control, but this system is never given form in his work. If the artificial way we have constructed reality is a system of control, then we have created it, we have endorsed it, and we are purposefully perpetuating it. Life is only as unreal as we have decided it should be. The Matrix evolves Baudrillard's concept, much to his chagrin according to interviews, by giving this system of control a face and a purpose. The machines. They have given humanity a false reality in order to benefit themselves. But, the film notes, we created the machines. We create the systems of control and endorse them and take on whatever benefits and consequences that come from them. Control is not some ethereal force. It is something we make for better or worse. The Matrix dips its toes in a variety of philosophies, some that contradict one another, but the atmosphere of the film and the positions of the narrative, whether intentional or unintentional, conjure up the notion of radical skepticism, the idea that all knowledge is likely impossible. In the film, Morpheus asks Neo if he has ever had a dream so vivid that he thought it was real, and if so, how could he tell the difference between the real world and the dream world? In the narrative, Morpheus is teaching Neo the truth, but thematically he is leading the audience down the dangerous road of radical skepticism, one of the most fundamentally difficult challenges that philosophers face. Radical skepticism suggests that we do not have an adequate ability to distinguish appearance from reality. Neo has only experienced the Matrix since birth, and has never seen anything outside of it, so he assumes the Matrix is organic and natural rather than artificial. In its strongest form, radical skepticism would even suggest that any knowledge is impossible. And since radical skepticism is certainly not casual by definition, one assumes that such a viewpoint would reach that extreme. In other words, in the eyes of radical skepticism, the plot of the Matrix is a possibility. René Descartes famously proposed a thought experiment called the Evil Demon. In this, Descartes invoked radical skepticism, saying that we cannot be certain of our reality. Translating to English, Descartes asked, Now, we're not talking court of law reasonable doubt here, we're talking tiniest possible shred of logical doubt. I go so far as to envision a scenario in which an all-powerful demon is deliberately concerned to deceive me as far as he possibly can. Is there anything I can still know? Can I be certain there is a world out there? 
Is there actually a table in front of me? No, this could all be a hallucination caused by the evil demon. In the Matrix, we are actually seeing this in action. The evil demon takes the form of the machines, specifically Agent Smith, the principal antagonist. The malicious machines, much as Descartes suggested, are deliberately deceiving what remains of humankind. Descartes' proposal in Radical Skepticism was modernized in the first half of the 20th century by philosopher Gilbert Harmon, who said more or less the same but used the example of a brain in a vat that was fed stimuli rather than something as magical as a demon. It was then further elaborated upon by the Matrix of all things. In this case, it is not only a suspended brain but the entire body. The Radical Skeptic would find this reasonable enough in spite of how ludicrous it sounds. The statement, we don't know anything, is intellectually disastrous because by that logic, taking it to its extremes, it casts knowledge itself as something that may not even be worthwhile. It is existentially disastrous as well because if taken in by radical skepticism, then one might conclude that if nothing is known, then maybe nothing matters. Philosophy does not exist in a vacuum. It affects how people see the universe and in turn, how people behave in said universe. There are, in fact, a lot of problems with radical skepticism, especially as it relates to existential matters. Suppose someone tells you you are a brain in a vat. Why should you give such a reason any validity? If you are a brain in a vat, then this person who tells you that you are does not exist. He, too, is only stimuli. Someone telling you that you are a brain in a vat is just another deceptive, fake experience from within your brain in a vat. But if you are not a brain in a vat, and let's get real here, you're almost certainly not, then you should not accept this evidence. In either case, you should ignore the brain in a vat hypothesis brought about by radical skepticism. The Matrix solves, or perhaps avoids, this issue by having those who deliver the revelation to Neo be people who live outside the false world and therefore are no longer fooled by the simulation. And radical skeptics would use that as a counter-argument, but frankly, if a radical skepticism thought experiment requires world-building and supporting characters, it is probably too unwieldy to stand up on its own. Skepticism, in general, is methodologically important. Reasonable skepticism challenges our theories and knowledge and demands that we test said theories. Reasonable scientific skepticism is not the same as radical skepticism. That is important to understand. Radical skepticism, taken to its extreme, dismisses knowing anything, and even if true, becomes impractical to day-to-day -day life. A consensus reality is necessary for simply interacting with people. When on the Nebuchadnezzar, Neo, Morpheus, and everyone else agrees that this is the real world, and work from that assumption until proven otherwise. They do not enter the real world and still maintain radical skepticism. And no, there is no matrix within a matrix. That's bunk. If the matrix were within another matrix, why would the machines let humanity know about its true enemy in the first place? Why wouldn't the second matrix simply be another pleasant reality? So, let's just not, okay? But that's the danger of radical skepticism, isn't it? Never being satisfied with answers that have a reasonable amount of evidence to back it up, so long as there is a preposterous alternative with virtually no evidence? Frankly, an extremist position of radical skepticism only requires a more reasonable skepticism in order to poke holes in it. There is a belief among some people that we are likely living in a simulated reality right now. The idea is that human beings will be able to build artificial realities like in The Matrix one day, and that reality will build its own artificial reality and so on ad infinitum. So, they say, what are the odds that we are living in the real world and not one of the countless artificial realities? Now, if one were taken in by such things, said person would say, ooh, that blew my mind. But this hypothesis makes huge leaps in logic. It assumes that humankind will definitely be able to create an artificial universe so precise that its inhabitants could not tell the difference. It assumes that humankind would exist so long in the future that technology would be possible. That's rather optimistic. It assumes that said artificial universe would be so flawless that there would never be a glitch. It assumes that the computers in the real world would never have an error or be turned off even once. It assumes the creators of such universes would never even attempt to make contact, ever. 
But some people really believe that. When Morpheus explains the nature of the Matrix to Neo that everything about his life has been a lie, Neo is understandably upset. Yet he quickly accepts this when one would assume that Neo would be so paranoid that he would question everything else that ever happens to him from this point on. To be unable to take anything that one perceives, to doubt everything without exception, would lead to insanity. Philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein called radical skepticism into question for this reason, saying, If you tried to doubt everything, you wouldn't get as far as doubting anything. The game of doubting itself presupposes certainty, for a doubt that doubted everything would not even be a doubt. Radical skepticism can often lead to the thought that maybe nothing has value. It is not a coincidence that Neo's aforementioned Simulacra and Simulation copy opens to the chapter on nihilism. In his copy, it's in the middle so we can see it, but in the real book, it's at the end. The directors wanted us to see this. However, the Matrix absolutely does not take this position. The machines are a system of control, but the humans are characters of value, even faith. Neo is the Messiah. Trinity's name is related to Christianity, the belief that God is three consubstantial persons. The ship's name, the Nebuchadnezzar, refers to a biblical figure whose dream is interpreted by Daniel. The last human city is called Zion. Morpheus is a mythological god of dreams in The Metamorphoses by the Roman poet Ovid. Morpheus's question to Neo about not knowing the difference between dreams and reality is in reference to this. The Oracle is a figure that reoccurs in many cultures, but the film showing us a blind man just before seeing this Oracle connects her to the blind Tiresias of Oedipus Rex. Those who work for the Resistance are associated with religion, with spirituality, with mythology and art, with things that people value. Events occur in the film that are attributed to miracles and cannot be explained otherwise. The Matrix travels in the realms of radical skepticism, but that is not its home. Radical skepticism is the byproduct of the narrative and expanding upon simulacra and simulation, but the film's more spiritual and life-affirming aspects are more substantive. Sometimes a piece of art intended to be positive or even innocuous can sometimes accidentally embolden toxic worldviews. The Matrix presents humanity as luminous beings, blessed with intelligence and decency, and worth saving. Hi everyone, if you like what I do, consider clicking on the orange Patreon link below. That's how this show happens. It's also a way for you to request an episode, so check it out.